Alrighty, howdy doody. Um, today, I have a few things to talk about today, actually. I have uh, a little list this time. So usually I just have like one word or a couple words that I look at briefly before the video and then I just kind of start talking. Um, today though, I have an actual piece of paper with some words I wrote down that I'm gonna reference. Um, so anyway, the first thing I wrote down, see, here it is. So the first thing I wrote was um, paying rent for the first time. Um, so my, it would be my, technically my junior year in college, which I wasn't actually in college, but it was my junior year, just to give you a frame of, you know, time frame, um, was the first year and the first time of my life that I ever actually paid my own rent, right? Because obviously growing up until you're 18 years old, whatever, you're with your parents, they're paying, they're paying the mortgage um, for the house, and then you go to college, and unless, you know, there's, people are different, whatever, but the way that my parents did it was they paid for my dorm, um, they paid for my whole living situation, my freshman year for, for, for sure, um, and then sophomore year when I got an apartment, um, they, they paid for that too. It was just never, you know, I was in school still and it was just never in question. They just kind of paid for it. And I never really doubted that. And it was actually awesome. <laughs> I never really even knew the difference. Um, but I guess this is last year now, my, my junior year in college. Um, I began to pay rent for the first time and actually, which, which is kind of weird because, um, the, the first time, so rent was like seven fifteen per month for this little apartment that I had that it wasn't great. You know, it, it was, it worked, it was fine, but it was nothing fancy. It wasn't, it wasn't awesome. Um, I'm gonna try to not die here. So anyway, so paying rent for the first time, I guess just kind of my point with that was, I thought it was actually exciting. I was like, holy shit, I actually paid my own rent. Like I paid for myself to survive. It was kind of cool for me. Like I, I felt so independent. Um, you, you know, you'd think that blowing away $715 would be like, ah, that sucks. There's almost a thousand, close to a thousand dollars. Um, not down the drain, but you know, you, it's gone now, um, for that month's worth of rent. And so you'd think that people would be like, nah, it sucks. I don't want to do that. Um, but for me, the first, the first time for sure. And even the first few times was like, oh, this is, this is amazing. I, I feel so I, I can survive on my own. I'm doing my own thing. I'm, I'm so independent. Um, and then that kind of quickly petered out to like, where I was basically like, all right, this sucks. This is way too expensive. My money's going down the drain. Um, and now I need help. <laughs> I didn't need help, but you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's kind of an interesting transition from the, the first time paying rent and that feeling of independence and I can, I can conquer the world. I'm on my own, you know? And then that kind of pretty quick, you know, in the next, in two or three months, I was like, Oh, okay. That, that feeling is gone now. <laughs> um, so that's one thing I want to talk about. Kind of a random little ding random little thing. Wow. Um, that I wanted to go over briefly. Sometimes by the way, my mind like thinks faster than what I can speak than, than my mouth can speak, you know? So my brain will go like, you know, I'll have all these ideas and then my, my voice will like not keep up with it. So I end up not speaking well sometimes. Um, anyway, that was a little side topic, but so that was the first thing was the feeling of independence and then transitioning into realizing what was actually going on. And I was blowing money away. That was the first thing, um, kind of random, but that's what it was. That's what it is. And that's how it's going to be. Um, so the next thing I have is holding yourself accountable. Um, I, you know, I think that holding yourself accountable is something that not a lot of people do. People, people love the blame game, you know? Um, I think that so a vast majority of the population loves excuses. They just love excuses. Um, they're not holding themselves accountable for anything almost. Anything that goes wrong in their life. And again, all these things I'm saying, I'm not perfect either. I'm not, I'm not saying that I am 100% accountable for everything in my life, which while that, I believe that is true, sometimes I still do try to find excuses, you know? Um, but I ultimately do believe that you are 100% accountable for your life, plain and simple, that easy. Um, that simple, not easy, take it back, it's simple, not easy. Um, but anyway, so the accountable thing, um, I, th I don't know what percentage, I don't, I don't know any numbers, I haven't done any research, um, but I can promise you a majority of the population um, 
does not hold themselves accountable for anything. Hardly anything. Oh, that's a red light. Hang on. Hold your seatbelts. Hold on to your seatbelts. Um, I think that's kind of a sad thing because when to me, when you when you give an excuse, when you admit that you well, when you're trying to express that you aren't the one accountable, um, that you have an excuse for something, well, he did this, that's why I couldn't do that, or I, I failed because of him or because of her. That to me is an old, is, is basically just a sign of weakness, right? You're just, you're just it's just an excuse. It's an, it's an excuse why you couldn't do something, and so you try to make up for that and say, ah, I couldn't do it because of them. And it's just weakness. I think it's really just weakness. And no one... I think that we need to start, uh, as, just as people, um, start being more accountable. I, I've just done a lot of research on people that are successful and people that are doing doing big things in their lives. I mean, all, all the names are really, are the big obvious ones, right? Like Oprah, Tony Robbins, Eric Thomas, all my favorite motivational speakers essentially have a high, high degree. And things I've read as well. I mean, it's not just these couple people. I mean, it's everyone that does that does well in life, um, and is and is successful and happy and and giving and sharing and they care. I mean, there's all these things, but all of them, they demonstrate a high degree of accountability, right? I mean, it's whatever happens to them is a result of their action and inaction, right? It's they're not going to try to blame somebody. They're not going to be like, oh, well, he he said this, and so I couldn't do that. Like they're, they're not going to do that. They just don't do that. <laughs> I mean, it's really that easy. Simple. Sorry. It's just that simple. Again, not easy. Um, it's what is easy is to give the excuse and be like, well, you know, I, I failed this because of that. That's easy. That's, that's what everyone does. That's the easy solution. What's not easy um, is to say, you know what? My bad. I'm the one that messed up. I'm the one who's in the wrong here. Let me fix it. Let me solve the problem. That's way harder. That's that takes so much more courage in my eyes. Um, and I actually, not to like, you know, toot my horn, but today I actually, um, I did that, you know, and I, I try to consistently do that. Wow. Um, there's a, there's things happening out here, but I, I try to always consistently do that. I, it's almost kind of fun for me. I don't, I don't know why I almost enjoy it. Like admitting that I screwed up. Cause it means that like I, I'm, when I fail something, it means I'm growing. If, if I, unsuccessfully try to, you know, do, do something. Um, and I, and I, and I can't do it and it fails and it sucked. All that means is that I'm like, I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone and I'm learning and growing. Right. And so anyway, today there was just a little example I was thinking of where, um, I, I messed up a project. I was supposed to do a thing before a different thing. doesn't really matter. Um, but the, the point, what the point is that I I screwed it up (laughs) and, um, and my boss came to me and he was talking to me about that. And I was like, oh, yeah, that, that was totally me. That was 100% my fault. I, I could have probably found a way to blame somebody else for that. And like, well, I talked to him and he said to do this. doesn't matter. I'm the one that messed it up, right? Um, and so I, I just, I, I was like, yeah, my bad. I, that was 100% my fault. I will fix it next time. Like, I'll learn and grow from that. Um, but I was just kind of, you know, testing out that today. And I try to always do that. I think that we should, we should all always do that. Um, stop blaming people, I think, is the main message. Just stop giving excuses and, and t- hold yourself accountable. That's kind of one thing about, one thing, one, one thing that's nice about having, like, for example, a gym partner. Because um, then if, if you don't go, or if, you, if you're tempted to not, to not go to the gym, they're going to be like, what? No, dude, you have to, I'm going to the gym. You can't just bail on me, right? They're, they're the ones holding you accountable. So it's, it's handy to have somebody else, um, to hold you accountable. But the reality is I think that when it, what it comes down to is that you have to be accountable for yourself, which is way harder. It's, it's easy when, when there's a whole team of people around you that are holding you accountable because they're, because they're just going to, push you to do it and you're gonna like you can't let 20 people down if you have you know a whole team of of 20 people I can almost promise you you're not gonna let all of them down it's it's much easier to to do that what's not as easy um, is to hold yourself accountable at all times Um, so that's that's just kind of one little thing I was thinking about too and then again this is pretty random I have three random very random things today so that was the second one third thing is um, so I have in my notes marshmallow kid and there was this experiment that I'm thinking of that was uh, an engineering experiment not really no that's not true not engineering at all it's just 
science, I guess, or the the psychology of the brain, really. So I guess science, not not engineering though. <laughs> um, but anyway, this little experiment was um, if you give a kid one marshmallow, right? I don't know what age, what how old they are. Um, if, if you give a kid one marshmallow and you leave it on the table for him, you say, if I come back in five minutes and the marshmallow is still there and you, and you don't eat that one marshmallow, I'll give you a second marshmallow, right? And the interesting thing is almost all, not, well, I actually need to do some more research on this before I even talk about it, I guess, but I, I'm pretty sure um, that the results were usually, and this is like a real estate thing that my one of my dudes was talking about, um, but usually when the kids offered one marshmallow, even with the whole, you know, I'll give you another marshmallow later if you don't eat it thing, even with that, they, they can't resist and they eat the marshmallow and then they don't get the second one, right? And so it's kind of an interesting... Um, interesting part of the brain where even if, if you can just wait five minutes you'll get double you'll get double the amount of marshmallows you'll get two <laughs> um, but if you don't you know that there's the one there tempting you um, and a lot of times kids and, and and it's not just kids by the way adults are the same if you give a, an adult a cold beer and you say don't drink that for five minutes I'll be back with another cold beer um, and you know that the same experiment I can almost promise you they'll crack that cold beer, the first one, and drink it. I mean, it's not just kids. Um, it's, it's, it's everyone. It's, it's our whole human population, basically. Um, it's just so rare that you find someone who's, who's really disciplined. And it kind of comes down to discipline, I guess, is really what this is about. Um, but kind of an interesting little experiment, though, right? Um, let's see. I'm trying to not repeat myself again because that's kind of my tendency. But... Um, yeah, so it's not just kids. I think it's kind of everybody. Hey. So I guess I'm going to end the video now so I don't repeat stuff. But uh, anyway, that's my that's my random uh, three-topic. Three-topic? Is, is that a word? Three-topic? Um, video. So anyway, I'm going to go to the gym. Um, do a little working out, even though I don't really feel like it right now. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Roger out.